it turns out that Porter um, lived such a, um, a lavish and indulgent life that he actually spent most of his money and that whenever his musicals were successful it caused him a problem because he owed so much tax. And so his letters are full of anxiety about money rather than tales of how he was spending it and he was constantly trying to find ways of getting around his tax problems. So the counterbalance between this really close, tender marriage and all of these sexual relationships with men is a really interesting insight into what queer life was like at that point for certain kinds of people. Eventually, in the late 1950s, he had it amputated, which removed all the pain. But once he'd had the operation, it shocked him so much that he never wrote anything else and he became a recluse. So he lived for another seven years, but basically um, didn't really go out or see people. It's hard to think of another songwriter of this period, the first half of the 20th century, um, whose music would be covered by a pop star of today in that kind of way. And it shows that Porter really does speak to us through the years in a way that's kind of distinctive and unusual. And I think it is because of these cultural um, issues around his life and work, rather than just the work itself, um, that enables that to happen. Letters of Cole Porter um, is out now, published by uh, Yale University Press. It's 672 pages covering his entire life from his childhood through to his dying days. And you can buy it now. <laughs>